Coming up, we're gonna walk you through our latest updates of Advanced eDiscovery. We built a complete and streamlined end-to-end -end flow within a central built-in eDiscovery solution. This allows you to hold, search, and review data as you conduct all kinds of investigations. For example, you may need to investigate employee actions that violate your organization's policies. Or it could be a regulation such as GDPR that triggers an investigation in order to hand over information related to a request and subject. Whatever the reason is, these can be complex tasks. And what's worse is you can introduce even more complexity, risk, and expense if you have to collect and export any data that could potentially be relevant over to a third party for discovery purposes. So my team is focused on delivering an integrated e-discovery experience right within Office 365 to help you reduce the time, effort, and cost associated with finding the content you're looking for. Let me walk you through an example. We suspect that an employee might be sharing confidential financial information with external people for personal gain. Let's start in the Security and Compliance Center. I've already gone through the wizard to create a new case to save some time. Let's assume we believe the leak may have occurred within the accounting department. We'll want to start by specifying who might be a person of interest or custodian in my investigation. And I'll do that by going directly to custodian management. From here, I want to add the custodians and I'll do so via this four-step wizard. First, I'll type in my custodian's names and you'll notice that the names are being validated against the Active Directory. I'll start with Bill and do the same with the rest of the custodians. Next, I can identify which data sources are important, such as a user's mailbox and OneDrive site. Again, these are sources that are unique to the users. We've done the work to identify the addresses for you. No more hunting for URLs, mailbox, and site addresses. When I click Next again, I can optionally add other shared resources, such as SharePoint and Teams content. In this case, we're gonna add the finance team site and associate it to Mandy, one of the custodians in the case. Optionally, I can, if necessary, send hold notifications to custodians and track their acknowledgements. I have the ability to create custom hold notices, which sends a user an email so they can read and understand the hold directions and record their acknowledgements. But in this case, we'll be conducting a sell-in investigation, so let's move past that. So now that we've identified who and what data we're in targeting, now I can run a search against the live system. You'll notice that we're gonna use the same simple wizard. So first I'll name the search. Next, I'm gonna define the search by adding conditions. Conditions let you specify keywords, message properties such as sent and received dates, or document properties like file names or last modified dates. You can even search for sensitive information such as social security numbers and documents that have been shared externally. But for this search, I'm gonna start by casting a broad net and search by date to capture everything that might be applicable. I can then filter the results later. We're gonna run a search from 2012 to now to make sure we catch everything. Next, the system will ask which custodians to include as part of the search. These are the custodians that we identified earlier, so I'll select them all. The wizard lets me search beyond the custodian scope, but we won't need to do so in this case. From here, I can review parameters and then finish but this will take some time depending on the size of the data set. To save some time, I have a completed search. And from here, I can do things like look at search statistics. These include things like top locations, which list the sources that have the highest number of items. I could also preview a search result, but in this case, I'm confident with the results that I have, so I'm ready to add the content to what we call a working set. And this triggers the content collection process. Now behind the scenes, Advanced eDiscovery is going to collect all the content from your search results and process everything that was collected. Processing includes extracting files from container files, extracting metadata such as dates, versions, and paths, and also extracting text. Processing supports hundreds of file types, including Microsoft and non-Microsoft files. Once the processing is complete, it will build an index so I can search all the content from a single interface. In many types of cases, I'll need to add non-Office 365 data into the case. This can be an on-prem content, social media, or content collector from a user's workstation. We provide a way to upload and process non-Office 365 content. To learn more about how to do that, you can go to the link shown. Once processing is complete, we will end up with a working set that contains all the search results across all of my custodians. Now I can focus on narrowing down the results. To view documents, we have three different viewers. The native viewer leverages the Office Online capabilities. This will provide a rich experience that allows you to view hidden content, such as slide notes, 
document comments, and Excel formulas. Next, we have a text view that contains the document's extracted text. This will be the most performant viewer and can be useful in situations where formatting and images are not as important as quickly understanding the document. The text viewer also has a diff view that can highlight differences between two near duplicate files. We also have an annotation view that allows you to mark up a document in case it has sensitive information that needs to be redacted. And of course, the viewers support hundreds of file types, including PDF, TIFF, MP4s, and more. Typically, I'd start by running searches to understand the data. I've pre-created a search based on keywords including terms related to sensitive financial data. So I'll click the search to view the results. As I'm viewing the files, I can use the panels on the right to perform actions. One action, for example, is tagging. Tags can be configured to meet the requirements of your case. The panel on the right also gives me access to other related content. I can look at the document history panel to see who else has interacted with this document. I can also see the context surrounding the document by viewing a list of its family members. I can see, for example, that this document was attached as part of an email thread and that it contains other sensitive information. In this case, I can see that one of the custodians, Des, emailed a sensitive document to an external party. So I can tag this document as hot. This confirms that Des is our prime suspect. Now I need to deliver the files to HR so they can take the next steps. And I have a couple of options. There's a simple download feature that zips and transfers the content using the browser's built-in capability. Or I can use export, which allows me to generate text files, include the tagging information, replace the natives with the redacted files, and it'll also generate a load file that contains all the metadata associated with the documents. So that was an overview of our work to deliver a built-in e-discovery solution for Microsoft 365. To learn more, check out the link shown and try it for yourself. Thanks for watching.